Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Rocketstock.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to recreate the title sequence from Guardians of the Galaxy. So here we are inside of After Effects and we're going to be using a couple of plugins with this tutorial. We're going to be using Element 3D as from Video Copilot. Uh, but it's a pretty straightforward tutorial and very easy to do. So let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to go up to a Composition and click on New Composition. And we'll just come here and call it, you know, Tutorial Comp. And I'm using 1920 by 1080, 23.976 frames per second. And I'm doing a duration of 10 seconds. And click OK. For our first element, I'm going to grab a space image. Of course, you can always download the project files. Those links will be in the description of this video. And just, just to scale, just hit S on your keyboard to bring up the scale. And to start off, let's grab the textile tool and come here and we'll type out our first piece of text. So I will go word by word to have full control over the animation. I'm going to use the typeface uh, Sansation. Of course, you can uh, download the actual uh, typeface they use for Guardians of the Galaxy. It's called uh, Guardian, but I don't want to use it in this tutorial since we don't have permission to use it and it's their own custom typeface for the film, but the typeface is called Guardian. You can do a quick Google search for it and you should be able to find it with no problem. But here we are with our textile tool and we have the first you know, type in here looking good. I'm going to go ahead and bold this up so it's nice and you know round like that. And of course, we can come in here, duplicate our text, uh, hit Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a PC, and we can come in here and change our text again. So we'll do like Rocket Stock, and then we'll also grab the textile tool again, and maybe we'll do, you know, of the, so we got Rocket of the Stock, which is, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, and we'll select all of our text here, and I just left out E, of course. Grab our text here, make sure we go to the Paragraph tab and do a right alignment. If you don't see the Paragraph tab, go, go up to Window Paragraph, and we can come here to the, uh, you know, tracking here and bring this down by a little bit. And of course, we can always adjust the size by a touch. And what we want to do is kind of line this up, all this text to be in a nice, you know, format. So we'll come here, just make everything a little bigger. And once everything is lined up nicely, I'll be back. So I'm back and my text is exactly how I want it laid out. And once you have your text laid out in this sort of format, what we need to do is go up to Layer, New, Solid. We'll call this one uh, E. 3D rocket, and this will be our first word, and click OK. And this is where Element 3D will come into play, but then go up to Effect, Video Copilot, Element. And what we need to do is go to the custom layers, go into the custom text and mask, and set the path layer one to rocket. And then we can go into the scene setup, and this is where we're gonna go ahead and type out our text. Go ahead and click on the word extrude, and this will pop up our text like this. And we need to go into the extrusion model over here and set the number of bevel copies to two. So if you go to the presets on the bottom down here, if you go into your materials, you should have a few default materials just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the extrusion model and we're going to apply the gold basic to the top one, to the bevel one up here. And then we'll grab like the paint down here and bring it to the bevel two, just so we can have some separation and we can see what we're doing right now. But we can go to the uh, gold basic and we can turn off the paint down here for a second so we can see the gold. And what we're going to want to do is go to the bevel outline, go ahead and enable that. And now we kind of have this nice stroke around our text. And then maybe we'll go here and enable our paint uh, layer here, go to that layer and we'll go to extrude and bring that number down so we can kind of create this sort of hollowed out effect here. And you know, maybe we won't have that so much, but we'll call it like that. And let's set the expand edges to like negative, you know, 0.2. And this will just kind of prevent any sort of, you know, text popping through our border here. So we'll scroll down here to material type and set the type to physical shader. And that will kind of make that blue pop out a little bit more. And what we're going to want to do is go to diffuse under textures, click on non set so we can bring up the texture channel. Let's go into this drop down and click on load from file. And this is where you might want to download a texture and we'll navigate to this texture. And I just you know, got this grungy texture here with some scratches on it. And we'll go ahead and select texture and we'll click OK. And now you see we kind of have this nice, you know, texture on here and that's looking, you know, pretty interesting and cool. And of course we can go into the actual, you know, diffuse color and we can adjust the color of this overall texture. Maybe I'll bright this up by a little bit. And maybe we'll go into the environment over here and grab like a nice sort of blurred out, you know, sort of look on experiment with what, you know, is going to make this look nice. I think it's a studio blurred looks really good. Maybe we'll go back into our blue texture here, go back to the diffuse, increase the diffuse by a touch so we can really make that, you know, blues stand out by a little bit. Maybe set up to like four. 
And of course, you can always adjust the color, maybe a little bit more. That should be good. Maybe we'll set the diffuse to like eight or so. And this is maybe where we'll go here, maybe make the uh, actual border of our text a little bit bigger. So go into the gold layer and we can, you know, mess with the outline width by a touch. And of course you can mess with the, you know, inside bevel and the outside bevel. Just kind of make it pop out a little by a little bit. And that looks really strong. And one last setting that we're gonna want to touch before we leave Element 3D is we want to go to both of these textures, just go one at a time, and we'll go all the way to the bottom to Advanced, and we want to set the Ambient Occlusion amount all the way to five. So it goes from one to five, and go to the second texture, and we'll set the AO amount to five as well. And then once you're done, you can click out of here. Okay, so we're looking really good. We have our basic text in here. Uh, however, the shading is not so good. You know, it's just kind of flat, our text isn't there. So let's go into our render settings and let's open up the lighting tab and let's set the add lighting to cinema and we're automatically gonna get some new reflections in here. And you know, it's gonna look okay. And maybe we'll go into the additional lighting, go into the rotation and decrease the X rotation by a little bit. And this will kind of move the light around and you can always mess with that by a touch. And what we'll do is go up to layer new light and we'll click okay. So with this light, we'll hit P on our keyboard to bring up position, move the light back in Z space so we can kind of start filling this entire logo by a little bit, or sorry, the text. And let's go ahead and move the light up in Y space here. And you know, that should be pretty interesting. And our text is right in there. And so now our text is, you know, pretty much illuminated and we're not losing any of that, you know, color detail. Okay, so now let's go into the ambient inclusion and let's enable AO. And basically, this is where all that shading is going to come together and look really nice. As you can see, it looks pretty good. And what we're going to need to do is maybe set the intensity to 4. And this will take a few moments, and it gets really shaded in there. And it looks nice. We'll go to the quality, and you might want to set this to ultra. Now, this will slow down your system a little bit. So you, we'll go ahead and turn this off in a second. But we'll, we'll want to keep that at ultra just for the best quality. And we'll come here to the radius and set this to like 3. And, you know, it looks pretty good. We have a nice little shading in there. And we got a lot going on, so it looks good. So go ahead for now, turn off the ambient inclusion, and we'll turn it back on before we render, just because we don't want to slow down our system by way too much. Uh, but it does make a huge difference in what we're trying to do. Okay, so now we have this basically all set up, and we want to start laying out the other text. So what we're going to do is duplicate this layer by going up to Edit, Duplicate, or hitting Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a PC. And we'll rename this layer to, you know, our second text, and I'll call it Stock. And we'll go into the uh, custom layers and set the path layer one to our second piece of text, which will be stock. And then we'll go into our world transform and start repositioning some of these parameters by a little bit so we can kind of, you know, get that layout exactly how we had it before. And that's nicely in there. Of course, we need to make this a little bit bigger and whatnot. Always just adjust the world scale. And maybe we'll make both our text layers here a little bit bigger. And let's we'll come here and just duplicate this again and bring this to the top. And of course, we'll go back into our custom layers and set this to our third piece of text, which is of the, and we'll go ahead and reposition our last piece of text. Okay, so we're looking good. And all we have to do is readjust uh, the style of this text. So let's go into the scene setup and let's start readjusting what's going on here. We'll go into the paint and we'll come here and bring this down, we'll go to the diffuse color and you know set this to like a warmer, you know, yellow color like this, maybe a little bit darker, I don't know. Maybe a little bit warmer, that should be good. Click OK, and then we'll go to the extrude and bring this forward by a little bit, maybe to almost one. Maybe we'll have it pop out like that, and that should be OK. And once we're done, we'll click OK, and we'll have a different sort of style for our text here. You know, maybe the color's a bit off, but you know, I think that for the most part that is pretty close. So now we want to animate this to kind of come in here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first word here, go to Rocket, and we'll add a keyframe for World Position X, Y, and World Position Z. And we'll also add a keyframe for our rotations over here. And then we'll hit U on our keyboard to bring up our keyframes. And we'll bring these over to about, you know, five seconds. So right over here. And then we'll animate this. So what we're going to do is go to the world position Z and bring this closer to us. Maybe it goes like negative 1600 almost. And we'll go to the X rotation and rotate this to the, you know, a little bit, maybe, you know, backwards a little bit. Like that should be cool. And we'll rotate this to the Y value. So it kind of comes in like this. And it looks pretty interesting. And then maybe we'll also bring up, go to the XY here and bring this up just by a touch. 
and you know that should be okay. And everything's looking good, and maybe we'll go you know back in time by a little bit, maybe go to like seven seconds, and we'll continue this world you know position Z to go continue to move this text back by a little bit, and also it'll continue to animate and look good, and maybe we'll move these keyframes over to the left by a touch. Okay, so then we'll go to our stock layer over here, and you're definitely gonna want to add a keyframe for the X, Y, Z, and our rotation. And then what we're gonna do is copy our keyframes, our first four keyframes here, and paste them to the beginning of our next word here. And all we have to do is go to the position X, Y, and bring this down, just kind of reposition this by a touch. And we'll, also what we'll do is we'll bring the world Z position forward in time just by a touch. So now if we move it forward in here, it'll look like our second piece of text is you know in front of our main text here, and that's pretty cool. And then, you know, we'll go ahead and copy this last keyframe and paste this in here so this will continue to animate forward. And then basically we gotta do our last one here for our third text. So go to like, you know, our four second mark here and add a keyframe for world position X, Y, Z, and our rotation. And once again, we'll copy the first four keyframes, go to the beginning of our timeline, you know, paste those in there. And we'll just come here and, you know, make some adjustments as necessary. And, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna to wanna to make some adjustments. So go to the world position X, Y, and we'll just you know, move this keyframe forward in time so we can kind of see where things are at and just move the world position X, Y over just by a touch like this. And then we can move this keyframe forward in time back to the beginning. All right, just taking a little bit of tweaking and you know, there you have it. Now we have our text in here. Make sure to copy the last keyframe there and paste it in for the world position Z. And things are looking really good here. We're basically almost done. So let's go ahead and add a lens flare into our composition here. I have a download here, which you can download this in the description of this video. And it's just a lens flare that we're gonna go ahead and composite into our footage. So let's go ahead and drag this into our timeline in here, just right on top of everything. And let's toggle switch in the modes and set the blending mode to add. And basically now we got rid of the black background and we hit S on our keyboard for scale. We can go ahead and scale this down by a touch. And we can nicely position this right above, you know, whatever element that you want to composite it on top of. And maybe we'll do like a 20% scale there. So let's go up to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. Let's go to the red channel and bring this up by a little bit. Go to the green channel and let's bring it down. And let's go to the blue channel and we should be able to bring this down as well, which will kind of give us a orange to yellow sort of look here, kind of giving us that gold lens flare. And that looks really nice. And... What we need to do is position this uh, lens flare to follow our text. So what we'll do is we'll hit P on our keyboard to bring up position and pull down shift and hit S on our keyboard to bring up scale and add a keyframe for both of these uh, properties right here. And what we're gonna do is maybe go to the end of our animation, which will be about seven seconds and wait for this to load up. And maybe we'll just have like a nice little, uh, you know, keyframe it well and we'll go ahead and just position this to where it'll kind of animate along to the you know right side here and we'll kind of come here to the beginning of our timeline here and let's go ahead and just really scale this up by a touch and let's go ahead and just reposition this lens flare you know to be right above uh, of our text here and let's go ahead and check this out uh, all the way throughout our animation see how it follows through and sometimes you're gonna have to just make some readjustments what's going on here. Maybe we'll go ahead and scale this down just a little bit more as well. So maybe we'll put this down to the, well, maybe we'll keep it right there. Okay, so our lens flare is now in there and looking good. So since we're done now, let's go back to our ambient inclusion and enable this for each of our words and we'll call it a day. So of course, let's toggle switch the modes and turn on motion blur for our three element layers and turn it on at the top and you should be good to go. And after a render, you should have something very similar to this and, you know, something with your own text and hopefully you can go out in space and make your own Guardians of the Galaxy text. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're ever in the need for high quality After Effects templates, be sure to check us out at rocketstock.com. We sell hundreds of great templates for your After Effects projects. And for more tutorials, be sure to check out our blog at rocketstock.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.